Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 13 in our incredible tutorial series where you are teaching the robots who's boss. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And I will also need you to get out your robotic gear. And as you are getting out your gear, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to learn today. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the second half of the homework that I gave you in lesson number 11. In lesson number 11, I told you to program the smart car from the remote where by using the pound key you would set the distance that you wanted to travel and using the star key you would set the speed that you wanted to travel. Now in lesson number 12 I went through the solution for programming the distance with the pound key and so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the solution for setting the speed of the car with the uh, star. First of all, you guys leave me a note down below, a comment down be below. How many of you were able to do this homework? Was anyone able to figure this out? Man, if you were having trouble, if you looked at lesson number 12 when you saw how I did it for setting the distance, I'm hoping that you could figure out how to set the speed because it was very similar. I will admit the thing that's a little bit different is on setting the distance you would just put pound and then listen for the number and then you would set D to that number. But I will admit with the speed you've got it's a little bit more complicated because you have to do some math that if I put in a speed of zero that just means the slowest speed. If I put in a nine that means the fastest speed. So you have to do a little math to translate zero to nine the numbers into velocity over the range that the car is capable of. But I'll kind of show you what I did and then hopefully you guys at least kind of got close to it and if you didn't at least you'll you'll kind of figure it out after seeing me do it. But I think sometimes if you at least try to do it then when I do it it's, it's like it makes sense because you've thought about it already. So we will go over here and I will get out of your way and we will talk about this. Well, we got to kind of think of what math are we up against. Well, if we went back and looked at lesson number eight, we figured out in lesson number eight that the minimum velocity that this thing will go reliably, I can go at a velocity, and that is not good. Let me fix that. Edit. Uh, undo. And let me get a good color here. Okay, in lesson number eight, we figured that we could go at a minimum velocity of 1.1 feet per second. So 1.1 feet per second and we'll call that V1. And then we also saw that the maximum velocity we could go, which we'll call V2, the maximum velocity that we could go I believe was 2.26 feet per second. So this will be 2.26 feet per second. All right. So now kind of what we're up against is if we put in, let's create two points. If we put in a remote value of zero, if I press zero on here, how fast do I want the car to go? I want it to go the minimum speed, which is 1.1. Okay. Now let's get a second point. If I put in a nine for the remote value. If I put in a 9, how fast do I want it to go? 2.26. Now I have two points. I can create a line. Yes, I can create a line. And so let's just kind of sketch the line here and then we'll come up with the equation for it. All right. Because those those functions in our program want to be passed a velocity. So I have to calculate a velocity. 
but I have to calculate the velocity based on a number that I enter from the remote. Well, what are the remote values? The remote values I pick, and they go from 0 to 9. So the remote values are going to be on the x-axis, and so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like that. Okay, and this is remote value. Well, based on the remote value, I calculate what? I calculate the velocity. And what is the first point? If I put in a zero on the remote, I want to go 1.1 feet per second. That would be the point there. That would be the point 0, 0,1.1. Now, if I put in a 9, I want to go 2.26, and that would be right about there. And that would be the point 9, 2.26. And so between those points, I can draw a what? I, I can draw a line, and I did not do a very good job on that line. Let me try that again. It's very hard to draw with this graphics Ah, that is just horrible. I cannot stand that. I'm going to have to undo that, and I'm going to have to do a better job. These graphic tablets are hard to use, and the reason they're hard to use is because I'm just looking at a blank tablet, and I'm having to look at the screen. So let's see if I can do a better job here. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. Okay, that's a pretty good line there between those two. So what I need is I need the equation, right? I need the equation of this line. Well, to get the equation of the line, what is the first thing that you need to do? The first thing you need to do is you need to calculate the slope. And remember from your Algebra 1, m, the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, in our case, we don't have y and x. What do we have? Well, our y is what? Our y is v. So I want velocity 2 minus velocity 1 over, for us, what is x? x is rv. So I want the rv, the right value, 2 minus the right value, 1. All right. Now I've gotten it written in terms of variables. Now I can put the number in. What is my y2? My y2 is 2.26. So up here, I'm going to have my v2 is 2.26 minus my v1. What is v1? v1 is 1.1. 1 2.26 minus 1.1. All right. Now I've got to do the denominator, and that is... Uh, RV2, well, what is RV2? RV2 is 9 minus RV1, which is 0. Okay, now I can do this. 2.26 minus 1.1 is 1.16 divided by 9. And so now I have a slope. And so I'll just write that again here. m is equal to 1.16 divided by 9. Okay. Now I've got the slope. Half the, battle's, half the battle is done. Now I need to get the equation of this line up here. So how do I do that? Well, the equation of a line is y minus y1 is equal to m on to x minus x1. Okay, now I need to rewrite that in terms of my variable. For me, y is what? It is v. So this becomes v minus v1 is equal to m. What is my m? I've got that. 1.16 divided by 9 and then times x what is my x? My x is rv, so it's going to be rv minus rv1. Now I can put numbers in. v minus, what is my v1? My v1 is 1.1. 1. 1. 
So I have V minus V1, so that's V minus 1.1 is equal to my slope, which is 1.16 divided by 9 times RV minus RV1. What is RV1? My first RV is 0, so that's 0. That makes it kind of easy, right? And so now it's going to be V minus 1.1 is equal to 1.16 divided by 9 times RV. Now if I want to calculate V based on the RV that I put in, if I want to calculate the velocity based on the RV that I put in, I want V by itself. So I can add 1.1 to both sides. So I have V minus 1.1 plus 1.1 becomes 0. So I have V is equal to 1.16 divided by 9 times RV, the right value, and then plus the 1 point, the 1.1. And so this then is the equation that allows me to calculate the velocity that I'm going to get based on the number that I put in. Then I'll pass that velocity to my forward function, to my backwards function, to my right turn, left turn. All those functions want the velocity, but I have to calculate it before I can pass it to it. All right. So let's keep this in mind, and I think I'll write it up at the top just so we'll have it nice and handy and neat up here. So I will put it up here very nicely. Uh, Okay, so let's try this. We're going to have V is equal to 1.16 divided by 9 times the remote value plus 1.1. And that will allow me to do the calculation in the program. And because this is floating point math, be sure to put a 9 point, and that way it doesn't treat 9 as an integer. If you divide by an uh, integer, sometimes you get an integer and it could make that round to 0 if we are not careful. Okay, so now let's open up our program, open up a fresh new Arduino IDE. And I think we need to start where we left off in lesson number 12. So we will come over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. You can search using the happy little green magnifier and search on robotic training lesson number 12. And then you should come to this most excellent lesson. And then down here you have the code that we left with in lesson number 12. And so you'll click on these two little page icons. This is being quite annoying. Okay, and then you will do a control C to copy. And then we will come back to the Arduino IDE. I will do a control A to select everything and a control V. That's V as in Victor to paste it. And now what I think we will do is we can switch over here to uh, this view. And you can see all of the action here on the smart car. And if I can find my USB cable, which sometimes likes to hide from me, and this is one of those cases, there it is. <coughs> we will plug in our USB cable. I just want to make sure that the code works from lesson number 12, that we haven't somehow got it uh, goofed up. So that is plugged in. And now let's download that code exactly the way it was in lesson 12 but I always like to start just by making sure that I'm starting from the position of things working and it looks like we're getting that happy little bar the happy little green bar that we love to see no orange which makes us happy it looks like it downloaded and I'm gonna make sure that this is off I'm gonna make sure that it's off before I do anything because I don't want it to drive off the table and then I will call up the serial monitor and let's just make sure that things are as we expect. I'm going to start by pressing the forward button and I'm making sure I'm pointing it at the IR receiver. And when I do that, I have to have my baud rates match and I am at 9600. And so I do have to set that. Okay, so let's take a look at a forward. 
and it recognizes forward, it recognizes backwards. If the motor was, I mean, if the battery was on, it would be moving around. But you see how we can test it just by looking at the print statements. And I've got a left turn, and I've got a right turn, and then I'm going to try to set the speed. I'm going to put a pound, I mean set distance, the pound for set distance, and then five, and then it set the distance to five, or a pound, and a four and it sets the distance to four so that's working and now let's just see if it recognizes the star that i'm looking for a speed and it does say set speed because remember when we set up the set distance we went ahead and kind of got started on the on the uh setting the speed and so let's look up here and we will find this if statement where it says if command was star set speed and what we did was we we looked for this ff 42 bd ff 44 bd and that was because ff 42 bd was star okay ff 44 ff 42 bd is the star value that you can see down here and so if i hit star <coughs> then it prints telling me to set speed i wait i start listening again and then i wait until i get a number and then i read that number and that number that i put in will be put to command and so i can check command dot value to see what was entered and so at this point i've just read the value but now i have to decide what to do and what i have to do is i have to then put that value into my variable and what was my variable my variable was the remote value rv okay so we probably are going to need to declare that variable here and so I will uh, I don't think I've used read value before so we'll come up and we'll make a variable for that as we're doing all of these things I will just say read an int is read value like that so now I've got a variable that I can use read value <coughs> so let's come back to our set speed okay now after this print I delay a hundred and then I print after this I'm gonna look and say if it's a zero if it's a one if it's a two if it's a three if it's a four if it's a five if it's a six if it's a seven if it's an eight if it's a nine we've done that already we did it up here these are all of those if statements now you see they end with like D equal nine and then this in curly that ends that if statement so we need to start with that curly and we need to go up and we need to copy all of this all the way up to the first if statement which was if zero okay so it's right after delay is a hundred and it's if command value is ff 4 ab 5 well 4 ab 5 is zero as you can see over my shoulder there so we're going to copy all these because this next code is going to be very similar to that and then we're going to put it right after the print statement and right before the end curly that is the main uh, that is the main if statement to set the speed so I'm going to paste that in there and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust all of these things. Okay, so if command value is zero, what do I want to set? I want to set remote value is zero. And then here instead of D zero, it is remote value. And then here it becomes remote value is one. And this would be remote value is one. And then this is remote value is 2 and this would be remote value is 2 why do I put these print statements in here just so we can test it without running it we can test it with the motors off and if you can print it then you can also send it to the motor so I mean this should really work so now this uh, is going to be 
RV is three, RV is three, RV is four, RV is four, remote value, remote value is five, remote value is five, remote value is five, six. I feel pretty good about this too. The reason I feel pretty good about this is we know that the other one worked. And so if we just make these changes, this should work. But you've just got to make sure that you make all the changes. And we have one more here. And this would be RV. And then this would be RV. All right. I think this is going to download. I think it's going to work. This is looking good. Okay, I do believe it downloaded. Now before we go over to the test track, what we're going to want to do is just check it using the print statements. All right, so we're going to kind of test this thing out using the print statements, and then we will see if it works. Okay, so I will hit the icon. I'm on 9600. That looks good. All right, so I'm just going to start with the forward, and it sees forward. Reverse, it sees reverse. Right, it sees right. Left, it sees left. And now I'm going to try to set a distance with a pound six. And it says distance is six. I'm going to hit a pound four. It says distance is four. Now let's go in and let's test those set speeds. So I will be hitting the star. So I'm going to hit star zero. And it says the remote value is zero. Star 1, the remote value is 1. Star 2, okay, star 3, star 4, star 5, star 6, ooh, star 6, that worked, star 7, star 8, star 9, star 0 again, and let's try that star 6. Man, sometimes this star six, what is going on there? I got a few repeat keys on this, but this seems to be working. Okay, this seems to be working. Star six. Okay, I believe it's working. I just got to be pointing in the right direction. So that really looks pretty good. So now, since I did the math, what that did, oh, okay, not quite yet, right? So I've got all those RVs, but what have I not done yet? I have to turn those RVs into what does the program want? The program wants a velocity. So I have to turn those right those remote values, I have to turn those remote values into a velocity because that is what all of those functions want. Remember, like if I go forward, like if I call the forward routine, let me find the forward. Okay, here is the forward. Uh, it wants to be past a distance, which we got last week, and a velocity. So I've got to go calculate that velocity because that function is going to want a distance, which I already have, and a velocity. So I'm going to come down here to set speed. And after I go through all of those if statements, at this point, this curly ends this last if statement. And so after that if statement, but before this curly, in between those two curlies, I need to calculate what? I need to calculate V. And V is equal to, let's see if I can get it where you can see everything at the same time. Sometimes it's hard because I lose my cursor. Okay, so if I put it like this, you can see it. And so V is equal to, we're going to use our parentheses 1.16 divided by 
because we're doing floating point math, we want both to be floats, and so we force it to be floats with non-point. If you don't do that, sometimes you can get an unexpected result. Times what? RV, and we just got the RV and all of those if statements with the remote, and then plus 1.1. All right, now if we download it, now we'll not just have the, oh, denied, forgot the semicolon. All right, uh, now we'll not just have the remote value, but that remote value will be turned into the velocity. And now the car will go, if I press a zero, it will go 1.1 feet per second. If I press a nine, it will go uh, 2.26 feet per second, and all the numbers in between will just scale nicely between those values. All right, guys, this is getting kind of scary because we are ready to go test this thing out. Okay, we are ready to test this thing out. Take a big shot of coffee. We better have a little hot coffee as well. This is a big moment. And since I will be over at the track, it might be a few moments before I can get another sip of coffee. Okay, so we will want to switch over here to the robot, robot camera. camera. The, the robot, robot camera, camera where you can, can see, see our testing, testing ground, our, our robot track there. So we will go over there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to get my remote at the ready. And then we're going to test this thing. Okay, we're going to put it on the starting mark, and I think that I'm going to start it at just two feet, so I'm going to put a pound and a two to tell it two feet, okay, a pound and a two to tell it two feet, and then I'm going to put a star and a zero to tell it slow, okay, and now I'm going to press forward. That definitely looks slow. It went exactly two, and it stopped, and now I'm going to come back. Shazam! All right, now let's take it up to a nine. So I'm gonna put a star and a nine for high speed, and now I'm gonna go forward. Man, did you see that? Much faster, much faster. Okay, now let's go four feet. So that would be pound four, that's four feet, and let's go slow. So that would be star zero. Okay, one, two, three, four. Bam! Exactly. And do you see how it's going at its minimum speed? Okay. Now let's go on intermediate speed. Let's go five. So I'll put star five and now go. You see that much faster. Three, four. Okay. And now let's come back. All right. So I'm going to go, let's go a speed of two. So I'm going to put star two. And you can see that that is faster than a one, but it's still pretty slow. Okay. I'm going to put, let's have it go seven feet. So I'm going to put a pound seven, and then I'm going to have it go slow. So I'll put star one. That's not its slowest, but it's pretty slow. So it goes seven feet pretty slow. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And now we'll come back. And you know, I've really got to be careful pointing coming back because seven foot's getting at about the end of its range. All right. Let's see if our turn still looks pretty good. So I think I'll go forward two. So that's going to be a pound two and I'll go a speed of five. So that will be a star five. Let's see if we broke our turning, but it should still be pretty close, I think. So I'm gonna go forward, one, two, and now I'm going to go right, which should tur turn it around. Okay, that went 90 degrees, I'll hit it again. Okay, and then we will come back. Okay, I'll turn it around again. Okay, and then we're going to go forward again. And then we'll come backwards. Hopefully we'll come backwards. There. 
Okay, boom. Okay, did you guys see that? I think that that was just pretty darn slick. So you see now, instead of just writing a program and then downloading that program into the smart car and then it doing what you want, you're now able to start programming it from the remote. You can give it your desired speed and then you can give it your desired distance and then you can still turn it, okay? And we kind of got it set more or less for 90 degree turns so that we could turn right or we could turn around and come back. And those were, uh, those were still working pretty well. And so I think that this is pretty, pretty darn slick. So let's talk about the things we like. I really like this Elegoo kit. I think it's a very solid, well-built little robot car. I think if you look at it, I think that you're getting a whole lot. You're getting a whole lot for your money. You know, we are getting a lot of learning done here and we're having a lot of fun for what we paid for this thing. So I like that. I think it's well built. I think it's good value. Some of the things that I don't like, okay, with the infrared remote, it is line of sight, which means uh, you know, when the car turns around, the little infrared remote, it, the infrared receiver is pointing the wrong way, and so your range is really, really short, you know, like maybe three or four feet. And then also, under best of conditions, when you have line of sight, it seems like about eight foot is the limit of what I can get. So this is really more of a learning tool. You learn how to interact with a remote control, but as far as a practical device, it's not very practical. So we really need to improve our ability to communicate with the smart car. And so what we will probably be doing in the next lesson is Bluetooth is an electromagnetic, it's a radio wave, and that should work a lot better than trying to send photons to this thing. So we will probably next week try to get our, uh, try to get our Bluetooth working. And you guys, maybe what your assignment is for next week is go ahead and look and see how to download. You can go to either the uh, Apple Store or you can go to the Google Store, Google Play, and you should be able to download the Elegoo Bluetooth uh, uh, app for your phone. So just search on like Elegoo Smart Car Bluetooth, uh, Smart Car Bluetooth, that type of thing. You should be able to download that app to your phone. And then what we'll, <coughs> what we'll look at next week is we'll look at how to program the Smart Car to take those signals that are going to be coming from your phone. And it's going to be very similar to what we did with this remote, but it's going to work a lot better because it's going to be radio waves instead of uh, trying to shoot photons over there. Are you guys having as much fun learning this stuff as I am teaching this stuff? The reason I love it, I just really love this because these things we're trying to do, you could not do if you didn't do math. And I'm trying to show you in this series of lessons how important it is to know how to do lines. I mean, how many times have we had to use uh, lines in this lesson? Probably five or six times already. And by knowing how to do the math behind a line, you can make the car do what you want. And that's really what I want you to see. I want you to start thinking like an engineer, and I want you to see how math is your friend. And math allows you to make your projects do things that you would not be able to do if you did not know the math. Okay, guys, I really appreciate your t attention. If you like this lesson, think about giving us a thumbs up. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notifications of my new lessons as they're coming out. And also, guys, feel free to look me up on Twitter, Paul J. McWhorter at Twitter, on Twitter, or also if you want to hook up on Facebook, uh, I'm under Paul space and Anna, Paul and Anna space McWhorter, Paul and Anna McWhorter. If you'd like to hook up on Facebook, I try to kind of post ideas there every once in a while. You know, follow me on Twitter. Let's try to get connected here and be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.